Welcome back to Innovate at Illinois. I'm your host, Andy Singer, and I'm a professor here at the University of Illinois. Today we're looking at some companies commercializing some truly innovative materials. Next up, Laura Blyle introduces us to a company that's turning corn waste into some innovative skateboards. Cornboard Manufacturing Inc. is an innovative startup using patented technology developed by professors at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The technology turns corn waste into building materials. Cornboard is a material that uses corn husks and stalks, commonly referred to as corn stover, that remains in the field after corn is harvested. The composite is a mixture of corn component with a polymer matrix prepared by laminating the mixture and applying heat and pressure. Corn stover is a renewable byproduct of commercial corn production. In the U.S. alone, more than 580 billion pounds of corn stover is created annually. In 2009, Cornboard Manufacturing and the University of Illinois entered into a license agreement. It enables the Texas-based company to utilize the corn-based structural composite technology initially developed by Illinois inventors Dr. Nancy Sotos, Dr. Scott White, and Dr. Thomas Mackin. Cornboard can be used as a replacement for pressed wood products in thousands of applications. Among the company's first products are Adirondack chairs and Stockett longboards, top-of-the-line performance skateboards that utilize the cornboard material. Cornboard Manufacturing CEO Lane Segerstrom visited the Champaign-Urbana campus in December to meet the inventors of this patented technology at their labs in the Beckman Institute. Segerstrom said he hopes to continue to build on his relationship with University of Illinois researchers into the future. Finally today, Danielle's back and she's talking with a graduate student from the University of Illinois who will tell us how his team got started and what's in their future. Hi, I'm Danielle Michelini and today we're here at Enterprise Works with Brett Walker of Liquid Glass Technologies. Brett, tell us about your company and how you all started. Well, Liquid Glass Technologies originally started with Rob Shepard, who is a PhD student in the Material Science Department here. And uh, what he did is he came up with an idea for um, a shear thickening fluid that would be very useful for sporting goods equipment. Brett, how did you get involved with this company? I had pre prior business experience because I've started up businesses myself and he knew that I was interested in this sort of thing. So he contacted me and um, so I just started working with the company from there and so then I quickly became absorbed in the company and working on new gel formulations, shear thickening fluid gel formulations and encapsulation of the shear thickening pads. So can you tell us more about your technology and kind of its per commercial potential? It's a shear thickening fluid, which is basically you have typical fluids like water, which continuously deform when you press them. And then you have um, polymers or like polymer solutions, which thin anytime you depress them. Those are the, like gels. But this actually, which actually has uh, garnered a lot of attention lately because of body armor, because of the wars in Afghanistan, and things of this nature is um, when you hit it actually it thickens up so uh, you have something that's really soft and gel like but as soon as you hit it or deform it rapidly it gels up so this can be useful for a lot of sporting goods equipment things so, so for example one of our initial products is golf pad indicators to where when it hits it it shows you how hard you hit the golf ball as well as where you hit it as far as whether you have hook or slice and wh whether or not you, where you need to change your uh, technique and where does your company stand right now Right now, currently, we've talked to some people here in the sporting goods that have experience with sporting goods uh, here at the um, Enterprise Works and, and other areas around here to um, talk to Dix and other local sporting goods places to get uh, basically our initial prototypes going. What we're trying to do right now is we actually have these shear thickening fluid pads. Our problem isn't so much the fluid itself. It's, uh, as you can see, I mean, you can, you can tap these rapidly and they thicken up. It's, um, these are, the, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, the problem is actually encapsulation. So we've been working, working with companies, because as you can imagine, if you take a golf club and hit this full speed with a golf ball, so around these edges here, we've been having leaking, leaking problems. So right now we're working with companies with ultrasonic welders to basically take sheets of plastic that we've thermoformed and make sure that they actually encapsulate properly. And once we get this last hurdle done, then we will actually start making multiple, multiple, multiple prototypes and taking to Dick's and other sporting goods places to try to actually get them on the market. So you said Rob had entered a few startup competitions, and I know one of them was COZAD. Can you tell us how that's kind of impacted your company? COZAD is a great exercise to basically get together and really professionally put your company together, and, and it's very competitive as well. So you have lots of other people who are like-minded as far as entrepreneurial mindset, but um, it's, you have to really have your game together as far as you have to have a good business plan, you have to have a clear path forward, and really it gets you focused into knowing what you want to do. 
So did you guys win anything from that? Did you take anything away? Oh, yes. Uh, we, uh, we won money from that. As, um, and also, I mean, as far as experience-wise is concerned, it also is a great networking tool because it puts you in contact with all Illinois Ventures. We had a fund matching program from them. And all, I mean, there's vast resources here at University of Illinois, and they're all networked into these competitions. So it was very, very much beneficial. What resources have you been able to tap into um, at being at the university? Uh, the Illinois Entrepreneurial Center has been great for us, as well as, and we received a grant from them. We've gone to incubator workshops where we get to talk to uh, people who can advise us on starting the business who have experience in sporting goods. There is basically limitless networking and resource potential here at the University of Illinois, which has been great for us starting up. Tell us what your journey as an entrepreneur has been like. Uh, it's been very interesting and definitely not a straight path. Um, Basically, uh, you start off like really excited about an idea you have and then realize there's a lot more to it than just, oh, I have a great idea and I know how to do it because all of us that were in the company, uh, most of us came from an engineering background. So we're in the lab all the time, we're graduate students, and so we realize, oh, we can just do this, this, and this and make this product. Well, just making the product isn't most of the battle typically when it comes to business. There's all sorts of uh, legal, legal advice that you need and an intellectual property. And, and you have to have all sorts of a good foundation before you can even think about having a marketable product. So what have been the challenges of transitioning your company as a student to now after graduation? Uh, some of the challenges have been um, as uh, Rob accepted a postdoc position uh, with George Whiteside at Harvard. So uh, I mean, so that's sort of a long distance relationship thing going on there. So I mean, I definitely communicate with Rob regularly, but nonetheless, the distance and not being able to work together with him in the lab is difficult. I'm still working on my PhD here at the University of Illinois and material science. And so I'm um, trying to basically just trying to balance everything with, uh, so I have my work that I have to get done for school, and then I have this that I have to get done on the side. And so just trying to time balance and money balance as far as getting the, the company off the ground and getting a good product to start off with. And uh, then communicating properly and making sure we have everybody's on the same page. Is, yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge. It's, it's good but, and a great experience, but it's definitely challenging. So do you have any advice for young entrepreneurs that are thinking of pursuing this field? Uh, just perseverance. Perseverance is the main thing. Um, definitely stick with it because your initial idea while well, great and uh, you should just keep, remember the enthusiasm you have when you have the initial idea and just keep going with it because there's a lot more work other than the initial idea to actually get a product going. Thanks Danielle and thank you for tuning in to Innovate at Illinois. Congratulations to all the entrepreneurs and their companies and we wish them the best of luck. Join us next time as we look at another group of innovators and entrepreneurs right here at the University of Illinois. support from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity.